you're new to the idea of a fountain pen, I hope that this little video serves as a useful tool for feeling confident about the process, thinking about what style of pen you would feel comfortable with and happy to not only buy, but to use on a regular basis, and some of the things to look out for in your search for the perfect fountain pen. I'm going to use five examples here in this little talk for you. I'm going to talk about five particular pens because these are all slightly different, but they're all accessible. They have different price points, but they can be useful for you. This one is a Kaweco Sport. This one, a much heavier and larger fountain pen by Diplomat, a company based in Germany. This, a almost a throwaway. I wouldn't throw it away. I've had it 25 years. A very cheap pen designed for probably a short lifespan and then to be thrown away. This is called a Creeks and Creeks. Very simple fountain pen, very lightweight. This one, much more uh, costly, a fountain pen by AT Cross & Co. And I'll show you this. And then a very standard school or university classic, a Lamy Safari fountain pen. Let's start with the Lamy. It's very lightweight. It has a superb pocket clip, really designed for an inside jacket pocket rather than a shirt pocket. Instead of twisting off, this has a complete pull-off cap. It has a very lightweight but strong steel nib. This one is a medium nib. Lamy pens come in a fine or a medium nib and you get to choose at the point of purchase. You can see between my fingers here an indentation in the barrel with a little plastic window that shows you where you are with the ink supply. Lamy have their own branded cartridges so you can't just fit any cartridge into a Lamy pen and you can use it with a refillable bladder so you can take ink from a bottle or just pop a cartridge in, screw on the main barrel piece here and that's an easy pen ready to go. You can buy those all over the world. Lots of department stores will also st sell them and student stationery stops, shops as well. This one, the Creek and Creek, is a very lightweight pen. I carry this pen a lot with me when I travel. I have other fountain pens that don't travel quite so much. This gold cross pen, for example, tends to stay at home, either in one of my writing pots or in a writing box. But this pen, I love it. It's, if I lose it, it doesn't matter. However, I place great emotional value on my pens and I haven't ever lost this pen. I bought this in Turin Airport in Northern Italy almost 25 years ago. It takes a very small industry standard refill, so they're interchangeable. I'll just take this one out and that simply goes in there as your main refill and another one inverted goes in the barrel so that you always have a spare ink cartridge with you and you're never going to run out. But again, like I say, all my pens have an emotional value for me and this one, like all the others, comes with lots of sentimental value and has been a superb pen that I've used in coffee shops, on aircraft, I've used it writing in museums, I've written postcards with it and I've amended manuscripts with it as is my want as a writer. This one, a cross fountain pen, is quite a classic within their range. It's quite a hefty weight to it. It's a rolled gold. This one's on a medium nib because then I have a, a nice easy flow and my handwriting being quite scratchy comes off quite well with a medium nib and I use it with a standard cross refill and those are easy to buy. But again, those are, those are manufacturer specific cartridges, but the cross pen is really beautiful. If signing documents in the presence of other people on a regular basis is important to you, if signing contracts is something that happens a lot, this pen has a lot of presence and a clip mechanism, but it works very well. It has a clip for your pocket or for your jacket pocket. It has a heft to it. When you're choosing a fountain pen, 
choose it for the role you're going to use it for. You go into a decent department store with a good stationery section, or you go into a stationery shop that has a selection of fountain pens. The staff there should let you use their demonstration models to write with. Too much pressure, of course, can damage the nib of a fountain pen, but occasional use, people practicing their signatures or a, a short phrase on a clean sheet of paper, that's a straightforward process. It's the nib and the pen in your hand that lets you know whether a pen is right. This pen, for example, the Cross Fountain Pen, I use it on a regular basis. I prefer to use it for writing slow, thoughtful, steady greetings cards or handwritten notes when perhaps a family has had some significant news and a card is always helpful for them in the post. The Diplomat pen has good weight. It has an unusual design with, which is green marble with the gilt edging details um, and is a super pen. It writes well, but because it has a, a nib for calligraphy and calligraphic writing, it has a different feel in the hand. I love it. It's a great pen. I don't take this out of the house. This isn't a pen I would use as a daily carry. It is instead a finer pen that stays home most of the time. Find a fountain pen that you love. Find a fountain pen that has a fun character like this Kaweco Sport. Find a fountain pen that is a daily user or a daily beater like the Lamy Safari. By the way, you can buy one of these for $20 or £25 or less in any decent department store. And it isn't a throwaway pen, but it is a pen that you can use and work with. You can try it on the fine nib or the medium nib to work out which is best for you. And it isn't therefore an expensive purchase if it isn't quite the right item. But you can go into decent shops and write with these pens on a trial basis. You want to buy a fountain pen with confidence, but think whether it is a daily carry a special pen that will stay in your workspace or your home office environment rather than leaving the house or whether it is something kind of in between a bit like my creeks and creeks it writes beautifully it's a good looking pen if i were to lose it i would be sad but it wouldn't break the bank whereas if i was to leave the house with one of those and accidentally leave it at an event I'd be really sad about that and quite frustrated that I'd been so silly. It doesn't need to leave the house. Choose a fountain pen based on the work that you want to do with it, whether it's a personal statement or simply an instrument to help your writing and to facilitate study or research or the creation of documents that you're working on by hand. But think about the function of the pen, how often you will use it, if it's something to use for special events and occasions, is it extremely unusual or more unusual than normal in the sense of this, for example, calligraphy item? Choose a pen because it's comfortable to write with and it might be an easy daily carry wherever you go. It could slip in a pocket, it could go in a bag, or it could be something that you want that is lightweight, low cost, very durable, and offers a decent writing instrument for a low purchase price. I hope that's helpful, but the best thing you can do is have a sense of what you want in a pen when you go into a physical department store or a stationery shop so that you can trial out just two or three pens and one or two nib sizes and purchase the pen that's absolutely right for the usage you will put it to and the lifestyle that you have and for which you need that pen. I hope that's been really helpful. It's a short video and the intention is just to give you a sense of purchasing with more confidence because you know what you want in a fountain pen.